Just another day in the Midwest. Welcome to White Hell. So in my garage, I have an older 50HO motor out of a 1989 Mustang. 50HO. It's your typical Craigslist find where the seller tells you it ran great, even though it likely saw minimal oil changes and a lot of abuse. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, why aren't you building an LS? The 5.0 is a piece of crap. The reality is these motors are cheap. You can still have a lot of fun with them and you can reuse a lot of the parts, including the oil pump. So the Ford Windsor uses a gear rotor type pump. Uh, these are very common and the advantages to these type of oil pumps is there's only two moving parts and you get a constant discharge regardless of oil pressure. Because of their simplicity, uh, these type of pumps are almost indestructible. As long as you don't suck in some metal or excessive foreign material, they're going to go a long time. So I won't use the word rebuild to describe what we're doing here today. It's more like take it apart, clean it, and just verify there's no obvious defects in the existing pump that would impair the operation. So this pump looks pretty good inside and it was cleaned up real nice, but I do need to use some degreaser to get some of that sludge off on the outside of the case. So one of the best things you can do with degreaser is give it time to work. For this step, I'm going to use purple power degreaser. And sadly, I'm all out, which means I need to build up the courage to go to Walmart to get some more. So one of the best ways to spice up your winter driving is a little banjo and a little e-brake. <laughs> So I got some more purple power and the parts I've had some time to soak and now I'm just using the nylon brush and a little elbow grease to finish cleaning these babies up. So while the degreaser is effective at taking your skin off, it's also effective at attacking aluminum. So you're going to want to limit time to exposure with any of these uh, current degreasers. So another important feature you'll find inside the oil pump is the bypass valve. Basically it's a spring-loaded valve that's been precision machined to match the housing and it lets oil by when a certain pressure is reached. On this pump, the bypass valve vents oil back into the pickup tube to be recycled back into the pump. On both the idler and the rotor, there's a mark to help with orientation when you place it in the assembly. Why Ford's crack engineers put a marking on this rotor, I can't explain. Reason being, it's a symmetric part. And look at the marking on the idler. I mean, come on, my kids' puzzles are tougher than this. Upon reassembly, the operation of the pump is for the most part self-explanatory. It also makes me ponder what this pump was doing in 1989, roughly a billion turns back. Hmm. I'm using Lucas Oil Assembly Lube uh, when I put the pump back together. It's a good additional insurance policy for that first start uh, to make sure everything is coated, no metal on metal, contact, etc. The weak link on the Ford Windsor setup is the oil pump drive shaft. It's a wimpy quarter inch rod that's going to break when your buddy yells, DROP THE CLUTCH! DROP THE CLUTCH! Given there's a crowd in the Applebee's parking lot, you're not about to let them down. So you rev it up to six grand, you let it fly, and your motor makes some terrible noises. But you don't hear any of those, because you're listening to Death Leopard. Near the top of the drive shaft is a pressed on skirt. The purpose of this skirt is to capture the drive shaft between the oil pump and the engine block. This is so when you remove the distributor, you don't inadvertently pull the drive shaft out and then have it fall in your oil pan. The distributor I'm planning to use is an HEI knockoff made for a Ford Windsor. I used one of these on another project recently, only to be surprised by a bad vacuum advance. What the? Rebuilding the oil pump wasn't high on my to-do list. But it's a box I need to check on my way to building a new engine. It's winter time and this is really the best time of year to do things like this. So I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Uh, why don't you leave me a comment and let me know what you think and thanks for watching.